All right, so welcome to the forward skating uh, training intensive for I Train Hockey. Uh, this is for the Train the Trainers uh, video. Uh, we're going to start with um, a few different balance drills. There'll be about uh, about ten different balance drills that we're going to work on, and then um, um, and then we'll progress to turns and stops, and we'll uh, get to all the basic fundamentals to skating forwards. Um, the first one that we're going to do is high knee hold. So we're going to skate up to the blue line, and then lift up your knee and hold it up as high as you can. Last one was high knee hold, and now this one we're gonna do high knee skate, so it's the exact same thing. The only difference is now we're gonna alternate. Uh, the most important thing is that we tell the kids, uh, don't bring your knees only to here. We want them to get them up as high as they possibly can. Let's show them like this. Next drill is uh, alternating knee drops. I always get the kids to bring their sticks behind their back, not behind their shoulders, but behind their lower back. Uh, they, the focus is to keep your chest up. Hockey stance is nice and wide, nice and low. Bend your back and lift up your chest. Make sure your chest is up. So you're, you're just gonna get the kids to drop their knee. Make sure the knee that's in front of them, that they're lunging on, is always in front of their body. We don't ever want it out to the side, so it's always in front. And instead of pushing forwards, we wanna imagine as if there's a string right above their heads and they push straight up. So they gotta keep their chest up. And then we alternate, obviously, onto the next leg. On the way down, we keep our chest up and nice and controlled. We push up off your left leg, and then vice versa, switch onto the right, and then uh, we'll show that in motion. Next drill is uh, two knee drops. So we're going to skate to the blue line. Uh, we're going to do a two knee drop the same way that we were doing the alternating knee drops. You got to keep your chest up on the way down, um, drop down, and we want to see how quickly the players can get up. So I always recommend that when they fall and when they go down, uh, they go down to their two knees and just see if they can quickly jump straight up to their feet. Um, it doesn't matter which leg lifts them up first, um, but it's a good idea obviously to alternate on both. Next one's uh, the exact same drill. We do a two knee drop, but we do it with a 360 spin. So stick behind their back still, chest up nice and strong. Then we're spinning to the left, we drop our left, we push off our right, drop our right, then always lift up the leading leg, the left, and then the right. And then when we go to the other blue line, we're gonna do the exact same thing, but we'll alternate and we uh, drop our right leg first. Okay, so next one we're going to do a, a jump at the blue line. We just want to see how high the kids can jump over each of the blue lines. We'll start with a two leg jump and then the next drill we'll do a one leg jump. Um, hockey stance, get down nice and wide and low, load up their legs, jump. When they jump, I want to see how well and how smoothly they can land. So they land shouldn't be very aggressive, but it should be nice and smooth and cushioned on the way down. Okay, so now we're going to do a one-legged jump, a skater stance. Uh, so a skater stance is we set our leg behind our body, load up our weight onto our right leg. I don't want the players to jump and land on the same right leg and try to do it as smoothly as we can. So it looks like this. Okay, 
we're going to progress to the next stage of the forward skating training intensive and we're going to uh, focus on our stopping edges. Uh, so obviously stopping is an incredibly important skill for hockey players. A good hockey stop, a true hockey stop, is when we're stopping on both our inside and outside edges at the exact same time. So we're going to start on the inside edge. We're going to skate from the blue to the red, tell the players to develop some speed on the way up and then stop in a skater stance on their right leg down nice and low, and then cross over, start right back into the blue line. Okay, so watch the ice. It's nice that we have a nice clear uh, clear ice, flooded ice. But uh, watch uh, when I stop. Um, I'm going to put a little bit too much weight on the toe, and you'll hear this sort of sound, where it's a bit rough. It's a bit of a rough sound. Um, and watch how it turns into a bit of a curve. So this is mistakenly how a lot of players would stop. Okay, so uh, now after showing the uh, incorrect way of doing it with the curve, we notice that the streak is quite skinny, it's quite skinny. Uh, so we want the weight distributed not just to the toe of the blade, but across the entire blade. Uh, when I stop now, again, nice fresh ice, you'll be able to see it very clearly. Uh, but when we stop, it's nice and thick, nice and wide, uh, white, white uh, snow a streak in the ice, I should say. And uh, it's a nice straight line as well too. Okay, so with the next drill, uh, we're doing the exact same inside edge stop. Uh, this time we're going to see how far the players can control their edge while they're stopping. So they're going to skate from this blue to the red, do the stop, and I want them to try to hold the stop all the way to the far blue, and then they can stay at the far blue uh, and make a line on that side. So this is what it looks like. Okay, so now we're going to progress to the outside edge stop. Uh, if you look at my legs, if I was stopping facing this way, um, then I'd be primarily stopping on my left leg, inside edge. Uh, but then we also want to be equally good stopping on our right leg, outside edge, at the exact same time. And that's what a true hockey stop is. So for in, order, in order for us to progress up to that point, we want to be really good at just stopping on the one edge. Um, the outside edge is a little bit difficult because uh, it's just an advanced form of stopping. Uh, when we stop, we try to make the letter L and uh, capital L. So we get, if we're stopping on our right leg, we get on our outside edge, we place the weight distributed amongst the entire blade, and we make sure that that uh, whole blade is in front of our, our left leg. So while I'm gliding off my left, I can place my weight onto my right, outside edge, and make the stop in the same way. This is the first stage of progression. So this is what we want them doing first. Mistakenly, a lot of players will place their leg behind them and make an L, uh, but this way, and drag their foot off the inside edge. So we wanna make sure it's on the outside edge, obviously. And when we stop, um, again, we're making that L. It should be a very loud, explosive stop um, uh, and a nice uh, white streak in the ice. Okay, so next stage of uh, progression, uh, when we're stopping off our outside edge, just to do it on one leg. So last time we had our left leg as our gliding leg. This time we're actually gonna lift up our left leg and finish with a crossover. So it's shown just like this. Okay, so whenever we're stopping off the outside edge, again, same as the inside edge, we don't want to place too much weight on the toe. This is what the toe would sound like if we placed mistakenly too much weight on the toe. So this is a little bit rough, and if we're able to see the ice, it's a very um, skinny streak, so we want it to be quite thick. Listen to the sound difference of this one. Much smoother, right? Much smoother. That's the one that we want. Our weight is distributed amongst the entire blade, um, and it's a nice smooth, nice smooth stop. Okay, so now uh, last stage of progression with our hockey stop, a full hockey stop is stopping off of two edges, both our inside and our outside edge. When we stop, I try to separate my legs so that one is ahead of the other. They're both right beside each other, but again, one is ahead of the other. Um, if I'm stopping primarily off my left leg, inside edge, that leg is almost a little bit straight while my right leg is really far bent. Most important thing is that you're uh, uh, rotating your ankles so that they're stopping off of both of the edges uh, and that both edges are, um, are, use, are stopping. Not just your left leg if your left leg is a primary leg, but make sure you're stopping off of both. So it looks like this.
one of the demonstrations that I always do for the kids is when we stop, we want to make sure that it's a really aggressive stop. So it should be very loud, an aggressive, explosive stop. And when we stop, I'll show it right now when I actually uh, skate up against the boards. I'm going to stop right in front of the boards and I tell the kids, look how high I can get the snow. Try to get the snow over the boards. So check this out. So after we do the hockey stop, I always tell the players um, it's really good to stop off of both edges, get the stop down first, and then if you find like some of the more advanced players or players that are ready to advance to the next level, um, if, uh, if you find like um, they need to quicken up their steps after the stop, uh, that's a really important thing. Um, I always tell the kids instead of stopping and starting, uh, that you combine those two things into one thing. So it's a stop and start. So after completing the hockey stop, the hockey stop is so well designed that you can decelerate so quickly stopping off of both of your edges as opposed to only stopping off of one. The quicker we can stop, the quicker we can start uh, skating in the opposite direction. So it's really important um, that our body is leaned and uh, in the direction that we want to go. Uh, and also we think about our stop, not so much as a stop, but as a spring. So we want to stop and spring out. And that's what the crossover start allows us to do. Uh, so we'll do a few of those right now as a demonstration. Okay, so whenever we're stopping, we want to focus that our body lean into where we want to go. So if I'm stopping right in front of you, and I want to start skating the opposite direction. My stick should be pointing to where I want to go before I stop. So before I stop, I point my stick, stop, and then bring out. If I was going in the opposite direction, the exact same thing would be true. As I'm skating towards you, I point my stick to where I want to go. You might want to do two hands to the forehand side, but then you stop and then bring out of the stop. This allows for us uh, to use our stick more as a balance tool um, than anything else. Okay, so uh, before we get into our uh, crossover starts, and we get into stops and starts, I should say, uh, we want to be really proficient at doing uh, step overs. So a step over is very similar to a crossover, only we're just stepping through it. So I have a few different types of step overs that I do. Um, the basic fundamentals to a good step over or good crossover is, um, is these steps. Get into a nice hockey stance, nice and wide and low. That's the first thing. Second thing is always flip onto the outside edge. The, the more you're on that outside edge, the better. When you cross over, cross that leg over, and even while it's in the air, it should remain in an athletic stance. So knee bent, uh, don't just flop it in front, but it should come up nice and high, knee bent, and instead of flopping in front, it should only lock. So it, almost as if it's locking into place. Now, a good step over has space in between, and they're right beside each other, okay? A bad crossover, a bad step over, is one ahead of the other. Or perhaps as you cross this leg over, this one slides back. We want both legs underneath our chin for more stability. Um, and then the other thing is, uh, we want to make sure that there's a lot of space in between. So these are just weak, not enough space in between. A lot of players will even do this, and they'll call that a crossover. So that's not a crossover, this is a crossover. You've got lots of space in between. When you land on that leg and it locks into place, your knees are bent, you're still in an athletic stance. Um, I always recommend to the players slamming their heels down. And the reason why we do this is just for more grip, more stability. So listen to my feet, I get on the outside edge, first. Don't pick up your foot, then try flipping to the outside edge. The outside edge is first. Then the second thing is to pick up your leg, slam that leg down, take a chunk out of the ice uh, by pressing weight into the heel uh, while the whole blade is on the ice. And then listen to this foot, same thing. Slam it down, outside edge, stomp, stomp. Okay, so after we complete this drill, that would be a good drill to do from goal line to blue line, and then at the blue line, flip, uh, go the, uh, face the opposite direction, the opposite boards, go blue line to blue line facing those boards, and then flip again at the next blue line. That's a good drill just to do up and maybe perhaps down the ice again. Uh, the next time I'd get them to do it, I want them to do it quite quickly now. So last time we had our whole weight, our whole um, blade distributed along the ice uh, with our weight into our uh, 
and a heel. Uh, now we're going to place all of our weight into our toe. So even though I'm on my toes right now, it still doesn't mean that I can't get onto my outside edge. You still get on that outside edge uh, because otherwise you're just going to be slipping out as opposed to actually grabbing the ice. If you can hear that, that loud grip, that is me grabbing the ice with my blade. Uh, so we're doing the same thing. I push off the inside edge by pronating into my toe and then I flip to the outside edge and do the exact same thing. Um, our crossovers are a little bit smaller. We would call these half step overs. So full ones were what we just did before where we slam it down. These are half where they're a heck of a lot quicker. Um, a lot of times it doesn't even look like it's more of like a shuffle as opposed to a full crossover. We just want to see how many times they can uh, stab the, into the ice with the picks. So it looks like this. Okay, uh, so now we're going to actually progress to the stop and start, a full stop and start. Uh, we want to get nice and wide and low. Um, these are steps where I am just stepping one leg ahead of the other, almost like the way I walk. We don't want to do steps. We want to make sure that the kids are pushing. Uh, so this is a stop and start wide. I'm going to push with my left inside edge, get on the outside edge, push with my right, do the crossover, and then I stop off my right. While I'm stopping off my right, uh, it should sound like this noise. So you're just stopping off your inside edge, and it should sound like this, that noise, and this noise in combination. So listen to this. So a nice, loud, aggressive stop. Those two things combine into one. As you're stopping off that leg, if I'm stopping off my left, watch my right. I keep my foot, my feet right beside each other. And I'll just kind of drag that toe, okay? So that might seem like um, that would go against uh, what we'd want to do because we never want to stop by dragging the toe, but that toe allows you to stay stable um, and it kind of anchors you into the ice. If you can't stop off uh, the outside edge quick enough, then we more or less drag that toe just for half an inch. So again, it looks like this. purpose of that drill is to see how far we can move laterally. Uh, so from side to side, um, with each one of their steps, they're not doing a lot of crossovers, they're doing that later. We want to do one crossover off the left and see how far they can uh, drift to the right, and then one crossover to the left, doing the exact same thing. How wide can they move, weaving up and down the ice. Okay, so now this is a true stop and start. We're going to be on one foot the entire time. So very similar to how we did it wide. This time I'm going to be on my left. I'll be on my right. I cross onto my left. I'm still on one foot. And then I stop off my right foot. So you're going to be on one foot, one foot, one foot the entire time. You shouldn't be on two feet uh, for much more than half of a second. I'll try to just stay on one. And again, we're not stepping through these stops and starts. But again, it's a nice strong push. Uh, so same thing, stay on your toes when we're, stop, uh, when we're uh, doing our stop, uh, doing our starts and our crossovers, uh, but we want to do it as quickly as we can. So it looks like this. Next one we're going to do uh, three step overs to the left and three step overs to the right. We want to focus on how quickly we can bust out those three, how wide we can move, how lateral we can get. Uh, but again, very quick feet and then stop aggressively and hurry up and stop, start skating in the opposite direction. Quick stop and start. It looks like this. We're going to get into forward crossovers now. So we have two different types of forward crossovers. Uh, one is a push and a glide, a push and a glide, and that's a full crossover, full crossover because it's got a nice big glide to it. Uh, that helps us maintain our speed. And then we also have half crossovers. Over 
back with the a little bit quicker. After coming out of a tight turn, we would do half crossovers. After coming out of a big circle, and we want to start really gaining some speed at the apex of the turn, we would come out with half crossovers. Um, we're going to get into full crossovers first. Uh, one mistake that I always see with kids is that they think their crossovers is more or less just placing one leg ahead of the other. So this is me just stepping one leg in front of the other. So those steps, again, that's just me uh, placing one leg ahead of the other, and uh, it's not a push, it's just stepping. It's almost like walking. Uh, so we want the kids to avoid that. A nice strong stride has a few components. So the first thing is you stride with your outside leg. So if I stride with my right, I pronate, press into the toe. There should be a nice loud rip off the inside edge. When you pick up your leg, similar to a crossover, a step over, you want to make sure that your leg is up nice and high knee is bent in an athletic stance and then it doesn't just flop into place but it's a very athletic lock into place. Um, the other leg's obviously on its outside edge, there's lots of space in between and the legs are right beside each other. Just like we did with a step over, we do with a crossover. Um, when we cross over, again, we stay down nice and low. There shouldn't be any sort of up and down movements. You sit down nice and low, athletic stance, you push and then lock your leg into place, staying low and athletic, and then you push off with your back foot. The second this leg, the crossover leg, touches down, and the other leg pushes off so that we get a two strong legs pushing. Uh, for younger players, sometimes we just get them to do the push and the cross push and then the cross um, and then as we progress we want them to push cross and then we get that second outside edge push and that's the main reason why we're doing a crossover just that we can push using both our legs uh, to push in the in the direction that we want to go so this is what it looks like As we cross over, we want to make sure that our leg, our toe, is pointing to where we want to go. So a lot of players will pick up their leg, and if I want to skate in this direction, they'll be pointing their toe in that direction. So it's almost beneficial, some players, uh, it's almost beneficial if you find like, the second they touch this leg down, they're really quickly getting to the next leg. They need to be um, proficient in crossing and then gliding off of each leg. So you push off your right, you can even turn your toe so that it points to where you want to go so that by the time you touch down, it's already gliding in the direction that you want it to go. Um, if you find like the kids again, are just sort of stepping through it and there isn't much glide to it, uh, then that's how we can smoothen it out. You push, you glide, you push, you glide, you're on your right gliding and then you're on your left gliding. And as we're on our left, we're on the outside edge. So as we're on the outside edge, uh, we want a little bit of weight off of the heel so that we can make this noise and we can get a good strong grip and then the second this leg the crossover leg touches down then instead of the weight in the heel the weight distributes to the toe so that we get the nice strong rip so you hear the grind and then the rip as I'm crossing over as a lefty on my right leg, I'm gonna have two hands on my hockey stick. You can have one, two is very beneficial. As long as your stick is pointing, um, it's always the same rule with any coach. They know this, the very tip of their stick always points to the center uh, dot, so the face-off dot around the circle. So point that on two hands on the forehand side. And then I always recommend one hand on the backhand side when you're skating in the opposite direction. And the main reason why we have that stick pointing to the middle is so that we get a bit of a lean. If I were to do just a tight turn and I were to center my weight, so I'm not leaning forward, backwards, left, or right, um, then, and I tried to turn, I would turn, but um, it would be a heck of a lot easier and faster for me to turn if I turned with a bit of a lean. So I've got a bit of a lean going now. As you're crossing over, we should have a natural lean in the direction that we're going in, for sure, an athletic lean. Um, and then also, our stick should be pointing to where we want to go. This baby is not just for shooting and stick handling and passing, uh, but this thing is also uh, for our balance tool. So we want to point our stick to where we want to go. With our 
pushes. We want to, uh, one thing that I always recommend to the players is that when they're pushing, they want to push with their right, they cross with their right, they push with their left. Um, when they're pushing like that, we want to get our feet away from each other. So very small pushes uh, would look like this, or that's my first push. There's not much distance between these, okay? So we want to get more distance, and we do that by lunging our leg forward, okay? So while this one goes in that direction, this one is going forwards. That's the first thing. You get your feet away from each other for every push. Then you cross over, have a nice smooth crossover, lots of space in between, and they're right beside each other. And then the same thing applies. You try to push so that you get your left leg so far away from your right. So you obviously extend our, our leg out to the side, but then also we gotta bend the leg that we're on, that we're gliding on, uh, just again to get our feet away from each other. If you look at my feet right now, there's not much space. I am pushing, but there's not much space in between each push. Not much space. Not much space. And now look at this. I lunge that leg forward. Again, a little more space in between. Alright, let's do some half crossovers now. So half crossovers are just like full crossovers, uh, but with less of a glide. So actually there's not much of a glide at all. You're more so on your toes, really, really quick steps, um, constant crossovers. And again, if we were coming out of a tight turn, we would execute half crossovers uh, just to help us accelerate coming out of the turn. That's this is what they look like. We're gonna do one crossover each way, skating straight up the ice. Uh, this should be a little bit of a half crossover, uh, but we can also begin with full crossovers, and then on the way back, you can have them do half crossovers. Uh, but we're gonna just weave up and down the ice. Very important that we're pushing off of both legs. I try to push off my left, then push off my right, then come to a bit of a plant. So it looks like this. So now we're going to progress to doing two crossovers each way. This is an easy one to do off of half crossovers. It should definitely be a half crossover technique. Always have two hands in your stick and make sure that your stick is leading you as you go. Just like this. And same thing now. And we're going to progress to three crossovers each way for a lot more uh, maximum acceleration. turns. Uh, we're constantly changing directions in our game, so we need to be very, very good at doing tight turns. If I begin my turn right here, and I'm going to tight turn around the puck from right to left, um, then this is how we execute the turn. Right here is the beginning of the tight turn. By the time you reach the beginning of the tight turn, um, your stick has already completed the turn. So here's how we complete the stick, uh, the turn with our stick. The very tip of your stick is like the needle on the compass and that should be pointing to where you want to go. If back there is where I want to go, then by the time I reach the very beginning of the tight turn, my stick has already done the turn. So just like the stick is a steering wheel sort of idea, before your tires, your skates start to turn, you need to turn your steering wheel fully. So on the backhand side, pop your arms away from your body and then even turn the very tip of the stick so it points directly behind the puck. Imagine as if the puck extends all the way up as high as it needs to go. You can't go over the puck like this, otherwise you would hit it. Uh, you have to wrap your arms around it. On the forehand side, if this was the beginning of the tight turn, um, then on the forehand side, I still want the very tip of the hockey stick pointing to where I want to go, and if it's directly behind me, um, then the tip of my stick points to where I want to go. I promise you that the tighter you turn your stick, and the quicker you turn the stick, the quicker your feet will turn as well. So this is more of a balance tool, so get used to wrapping it and keeping it quite close. Uh, don't wrap it and go wide. You want to make it a tight turn. It's a tight, tight turn. So again, here's the beginning of the tight turn. If here's the end of the tight turn, 
and here's the midpoint right here. Then just over the midpoint, somewhere in between the midpoint and the very uh, end of the turn, that's our apex of the turn. So just like uh, stock cars and NASCAR race cars um, would exit the turn, um, the oval, oval of a turn, uh, with uh, tons of acceleration in order to propel themselves with tons of speed. We do that exact same thing. Very easy to develop speed going into the tight turn, uh, but it's a little bit more difficult if you hold the turn, hold it, hold it, hold it until the end before you begin doing your half crossovers. Um, we want to do the half crossovers at just over the midpoint, so we're going to call that the high point of the turn, so the apex of the turn. Uh, so again, it would look like this. I step up, wrap my stick, do the turn, and at the high point, start to do your crossovers, your half crossovers. So now let's get into the feet. So um, again, here's the beginning of the tight turn. My stick has already completed the tight turn. The next thing that goes is the leading foot. So if I'm turning to my left, that's obviously my left leg. We have two different ways that we're gonna turn. The natural way uh, is just to get on the outside edge, place the weight into the heel, and then obviously turn it while it's on the outside edge. This is not how we turn our feet. This is how we turn our feet. One's on the outside edge, one's resting on the inside edge. Um, this leg should be very far in front. You should be very low onto this leg. I always tell the players that if you start really high in the turn, you should finish quite low so that you sink, that we sink into the tight turn. My outside leg is a stability leg, so it stays off its inside edge and it's still making this noise where you're grinding into it and grabbing it, but it is very far back, quite far back. So in order, tip of the stick goes first, then leading foot, then the outside foot, and in order for us to gain speed going into the turn, we obviously want to lean towards it. Once you sink and you sit down nice and low to it, then uh, lean towards it as well. Um, our feet are naturally going to be doing this, where one is pushing off its inside edge, One's pushing off on its outside edge. So it's almost like for half of a second you're doing this. To do your tight turn. But since we're not doing a 360 and we're just coming up, going north, and then coming back south, uh, we want to make sure that we're only uh, grabbing the ice like that for half of a second. As you're turning, one common error that I see kids doing is that their head is down. Let's make sure that our head is always up and we're always looking to where we want to go. Before you even begin to turn, you're already looking in the direction that you want to skate. Watch my eyes. We want to make sure that's a really tight turn. So if I go in on this angle, and I head up the right side. I want to almost come, uh, go up on a straight line and come back on the exact straight line. So when an airplane lands, an airplane lands and it's a very wide, wide turn. You want it to be very tight. So watch how naturally my feet are really close to the puck on the way into the turn and on the way out. Watch how close my feet are. On the way in and on the way out. And then I get back on this nice straight line that I came in on. On the way in, you should be accelerating very fast. Get into that turn as fast as you can. The turn is naturally gonna turn into a bit of a stop. You will hear a bit of a stopping sound like that, um, combined with all the rips and you grabbing the ice. And that's totally fine. Um, let it sort of naturally do that. Um, again, we want to accelerate coming out of the turn, but we want to keep it a turn as opposed to just making it into a full stop. So mistakenly, this is how a lot of players do it. They go in really, really tight with a lot of speed, but then by the time they're done, they're this wide, so they're really far away from the puck. Uh, so to be a true tight turn, we want to make sure that baby's, in, we are on a straight line, we do the tight turn, we come back on that straight line, and it's very, very tight. trying to jump into the tight turn. So on the way in, you're accelerating very quickly. Your last stride uh, should not become, uh, should not uh, be uh, too far away from the puck. So a lot of players will naturally skate and then do this. They'll pause, they'll glide, and then they'll turn, right? So that pause is only gonna slow you down. Your last stride should be right on top of the puck 
and then you turn on a dime. That's how quick it needs to be. There should be no glide on the way up. Perhaps for players when you want to progress and you want to just teach them how to do it, um, and they're just doing the fundamentals, then you might want to start with a bit of a glide on the approach to the turn. Um, but the most advanced version is taking that last stride right on top of the puck, and then in a half of a second, split second, you turn, and then coming out of that turn, you want to accelerate. We are going to go into that turn with 100 miles an hour speed. We want to go in there as quickly as we can, but then of equal importance is that we come out of the turn with speed. We're going in with speed, and we don't want to lose speed just because we're turning. We want to keep our speed up. So that's going to naturally happen when we do our crossovers at the high point of the turn. Cross, 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 cross. Um, to accelerate quickly coming out of the turn, it doesn't take one half crossover. It takes sometimes three or four or five. I like to, before I get into a natural forward stride, I, sh I would like to do at least three or four crossovers um, and then get into my full stride. So we'll actually show how to do that right now. Watch how many crossovers I get coming out of the tight turn before I get into my full stride. tight turns to do is just to turn off the outside edge with all the emphasis on the outside edge heel uh, so it looks like this and it sounds like this um, so that type of tight turn looked a heck of a lot different um, than what we were doing before as a natural tight turn uh, this one's just called an outside edge tight turn so um, the inside edge is doing a little bit of work but mostly the outside edge uh, is doing about 90 percent of it um, we just grind into the ice as much as we can and in the same way as we draw the letter C by rotating our wrist, we draw the letter C by rotating our ankle uh, while we're sitting on the outside edge, while our weight is into the heel. So you can hear that crack. So I'm on the outside edge and I'm on the heel. If I just lifted up my toe um, and, and tried pressing weight into my heel, I wouldn't be able to get the grip that I want. It has to be on the outside edge while pressing into it. Um, when I do this, and sometimes I would do this at full speed, so you think, ah, oh, you know what? I wouldn't be able to turn off of one foot um, at high speed, but in fact, uh, you can. So my leg is quite straight. In a natural tight turn, your leading leg is really far bent, um, and both legs are important. Off the outside edge tight turn, your leg is quite straight. So watch how it's, it has a little bit of a natural athletic bend, but there is a lot of weight sitting on that leg, despite the fact that it's almost straight. So I'll do a few demonstrations. Last drill, this one's one of my favorite ones to do just because there's so much potential to gain a lot of speed. Uh, sometimes we can start at the blue, go around the face-off circle and come back to this blue, or we can go around the circle and then do a figure eight and go actually around that circle and come right back here. We're always going around the face-off circle from inside out, so towards the boards, uh, and we're just gonna do a walk through right now. Start at the blue line with a crossover start. So we get the crossover start in. Then we bust out as many strides as we can. So we'll walk with me. We sort of skate, pound, 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 pound into the ice. We're about to get into a turn. And because we've gained so much speed on the approach to the circle, we're going to do a natural, uh, sorry, not a natural tight turn. We're going to do an outside edge tight turn. So I'll skate in, do an outside edge. Just to slow me down before I get into the crossovers. Then I'm going to start with full crossovers. So with a push and a glide, a push and a glide, push and a glide. When I reach about the hash marks, where the hash marks would be, we are now exiting the turn. So what we need to do is exit with half crossovers. So now I do as many half crossovers as it takes. It should take you above the face-off circle to do the half crossovers. And then this is the most important part. Most players just more or less glide back into line. This is where coming out of the half crossovers, we can still get a good three or four pound strides. So you just pound them out and then push yourself back into line. So the best part of this drill is that it incorporates every aspect that we just worked on uh, besides stops in the forward skating uh, training intensive. So we start with a crossover start, we pound our strides in, we do the tight turn, we do full crossovers, we do half crossovers, and then we exit the turn with a bunch of speed back into a forward stride.